So uh, I want you to take your Bible, turn to John chapter 19. I said this morning that I was going to preach on the subject, some sins are worse than others. John chapter number 19. And I want to begin here with this verse here tonight. It settles it really. And, and uh, uh, show you something the Lord said. And we'll settle this issue once and for all. I meet people every now and then, and I have met a lot of people that say, uh, you, they talk about a sin, they did this. They say, well, a sin's a sin. If you commit uh, one sin, it's the same as any other sin. And I've had a lot of people say that to me. And that is simply not true. And it's not biblical. Let's see what the Bible says tonight. Our church is known for Bible preaching. This church is known all over this town for preaching the Bible. We're going to give you the Bible, just like it says. Look here in John chapter number 19 and verse number 11. Jesus talking to them Pharisees and scribes and old Pilate. He said this, Jesus answered, Thou, Pilate, couldest have no power at all against me, except it were given thee from above. Therefore, he that delivered me, that's Judas, unto thee hath the greater sin. Now, what did Jesus say there? Pilate was getting ready to, well, getting ready to have him crucified, and he said, now look, Pilate, you, 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 you're getting ready to have me done away with, but, and that's bad, and you couldn't even do that if God didn't let you. But he that delivered me to you, Judas Iscariot, hath the greater sin. Now, the, you got to understand how your Bible uses the word great and greater. Many times when the Bible uses the word great, it don't mean like we would say, man, that's great, like wonderful. It would be, it's in size, big. You'd equate great with big. Like, like the great fish. A great fish swallowed Jonah. That meant a big one. <laughs> That's what that meant, big. And if it's greater, it's bigger. That don't mean it's wonderful. That's a wonderful fish. That's a more wonderful fish. It could be that long. Great meant size. So greater sin, like a great storm. It don't mean it's wonderful, isn't this a great, wonderful storm? Great would mean huge, powerful, strong. So the Lord used it in that sense and said, that sin is greater, bigger, more awful, more terrible than your sin. So tonight, uh, that's one verse, and I'll, I'll start there tonight, with some sins are worse than others. I'm going to lay to rest that old rumor tonight that said all sins are the same. I've heard people say, well, if you're going to do that, you might as well do that, sin, sin, and uh, that ain't true. That is not true at all. Ladies and gentlemen, it simply is not true. I've heard people say, uh, well, he went out here and done this. That ain't no worse than old so-and-so. Yes, it is. Yes, it is and can be many times. Now, I need to uh, tell you where that thought comes from, and then I'm going to say something and give you two or three little thoughts. First of all, uh, let me say this, lest you misunderstand me. Everybody listen and remember this. There is no such thing as a little sin. No such thing, right? There ain't no such thing as a little sin. People say, well, he committed a sin. Ah, just a little sin. No, no. There is no such thing. I don't mean to imply that at all. When I say some sins are worse than others, I'm not saying there's little bitty sins and uh, like a little white line. And, uh, you know, they, no, 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 no. No, there is no little sin. All sin is bad. All sin breaks the law of God. All sin uh, is wicked. All sin is ungodly. All sin is responsible for Jesus dying on the cross. There is no little sin. That's like saying there's a little elephant. There ain't no such thing as a little elephant. Uh, there's some bigger than others, but they're all big, right? A baby elephant is big. A baby elephant is big. There is no such thing as a little elephant elephant, but some elephants are bigger than others. There's no such thing as a little sin, but some sins are bigger than others. Got that? Remember that now. Don't forget that. No such thing as a little sin. So don't you sit there and think, oh, well, I, I don't do what a lot of people do. I just do a little over here. No, 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 no. You're minimizing the sin. It ain't no minimum sin. There ain't no little sin. They're just some bigger and worse than others. They're all bad. 
Now, let me show you where that comes from. Turn to the book of James, chapter number 2. Let me show you a verse of scripture here that uh, is, uh, is, is a little tricky if you don't read it right. You got to be careful how you handle it, Bible. Uh, that Bible's like a, uh, uh, the Bible's like a, uh, it's like a sword. It's like a, a double-edged, uh, double-edged razor blade, brother. You, you cut yourself with it if you ain't careful. And you got to learn how to rightly divide it and handle it right. Look at James chapter 2, and I'll show you where that comes from. James chapter 2 and verse number 10. For whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. Now there's where that line of thinking and reasoning comes from. People say, see there, right there. The Bible said if you, if you kept all alone and just mess up this one little tiny bit, you're just like you might as well went ahead and done all that. That's not what it said. That's not what it said. It said you're guilty of all. You are, you, what that's saying is, listen to me carefully. What that verse is saying is, if you keep 90% of the law and break one part of it, you're still a lawbreaker. You can't say, I'm innocent because I only broke one law out of 10. You see what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying. You're guilty. You're guilty just like somebody who's broke them all is guilty. Got that? That's what that verse is saying. That verse ain't saying, well, if you've done one sin, you might as well do all the rest of it. That's not, what, that's not what it's saying at all. You know, some people use that for an excuse to sin. They, they sure do. They use that for an excuse to say, well, if you've if you done this, you might as well do everything else too. It ain't no different. It sure is. It sure is. Now, I want to give you three things tonight or four, right quick little thoughts, and, and uh, deal with this and maybe help you get your right understanding. Number one. I, some sins are worse than others. Some sins are worse than others, number one, because of the extent to which it defies the law of God. The, some sins are worse than others because to the extent to which it defies the law of God. All sin is bad. Sin costs God his son. Sin costs heaven of its most precious uh, um, uh, resident, the Lord Jesus Christ. Sin uh, caused slavery. Sin caused all the world's problems. Sin is evil. Sin is wicked. Sin is sickening. Sin is nasty. It's awful. But some sins defy the law of God more than other sins. You say, Brother Danny, what are you talking about? Well, it, it's simple. It, it, it's very simple. It, uh, even in court, it's like this. If I, if I am driving down the road and the speed limit is is uh, 70, and, and I'm doing 70, 70, you, they usually won't stop you, you know, three or four or five, uh, they, uh, you know, eight, nine miles an hour over the speed limit, so I'm doing 78, nine miles, and I have been stopped for doing like eight miles over the speed limit before, coming right down there State 40 years ago, and the guy, and the, and the, the uh, policeman comes up, he said, sir, you, you were going over the speed limit, so I was breaking the law, right? And he'll write me a ticket. And I'll tell him, I'll say, well, look now, what I, what I need to do about this. And he said, well, if you'll go up there and you'll pay the fine and you'll, you'll do whatever, you, you know, you'll do whatever you need to do, uh, you can get this took care of. And, uh, and, and usually if it's below 15 miles over the speed limit, they give you a little, little grace there where it don't put points on your insurance or something like that. Now, and uh, and I, I'm doing 79 miles an hour. I'm a lawbreaker. I have broke the law, right? I have broke the law. Now, let's say I'm going down through there and I'm doing 120. I'm doing 120 like Jeremy. That's probably why he ain't here tonight. He's probably in jail. He, he's watching me tonight. Uh, but uh, 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 I'm doing 120. I'm doing 120 miles an hour and the cop said, get out of the car, sir. Uh, he said, you, you might have to park this thing. Uh, you're going, and I said, well, well I'm, just, I'm just speeding. I, I said, the other day I was doing nine mile an hour and you didn't make me get out of the car. And he said, but wait a minute, 120 is way worse than 78 or 79. 
Way worse. You're in a whole nother ball game here. You're like, no, 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 officer. Breaking the laws, breaking the law. 78's bad as 120. He says, no, it's not. You break the law more at 120 than you do at 78. If you can understand that, nod your head. If I'm getting my phone around. Uh, to the extent that it defies the law. Uh, doing 120, they'll take your license, brother. You can go to jail. You, you can go to jail going that fast. I mean, they'll take your car, confiscate it on the spot right there. Now, let's just say this. Uh, let, let's, just say, let's just say this to the extent to what it, defi- it defies the law of God. Let's just say tonight that um, um, I, I, I do this and I, I get mad. And uh, let's say I got mad at my wife and I said something hateful. And I said, just, just hush, leave me alone, something like that. And I was, I was, hey, that's wrong. That's wrong, right? That's wrong. And I would have to come back and I'd have to say, look, I'm sorry, that was wrong. But then, let's say the next day, my neighbor said something to me and I got my gun and shot him. And I shot him and killed him. I can't say, there ain't no difference. There is a difference. Shooting somebody and killing them is worse than getting mad and saying something. Now, I'm not minimizing. You say, oh, well, it's hard for me to get mad. No. You say, well, if I'm going to get mad, is it hard for me to go ahead and shoot them? No. I'm just saying it defies the law of God way more than an act of being mad. Do you understand that? Some sins are worse than others in that it defies the law of God more than if, let's say, um, uh, let's say you uh, uh, kill an innocent baby or, or a grandmother, just kill them, just murder them for no reason at all, and then you get a parking ticket. You, both of them are breaking the law, both of them. But you, you're not going to sit there and tell me, well, sin's sin, it, all sin's the same. Uh, you got to be about half crazy to talk, think like that. Uh, well, you're both, there ain't no difference in getting a traffic ticket and killing somebody. Yes, they are, and you know they are. Anybody with any half a brain knows it. I don't know how people in church get so dumb. I, it's like the devil just gets in them or something. I've heard them stand up in church say, well, sin's a sin. If you've committed one sin, it's the same as committing all the rest of them. No, it's not. It is not. Getting a traffic ticket, uh, getting a parking ticket is not, is not, is not the same because it defies the law really way, way more. Number one, that is it, to the extent to which it defies the law. Number two, all sin ain't the same. Some sins are worse than other because of the effect it has on the one committing it. Some sins you can commit don't really affect you physically. Others do, big time, big time, big time. If I got mad at my wife and I said something I shouldn't, that's wrong. And I ought to tell her I'm sorry and I should say I'm sorry, I shouldn't act like that. I'm sorry, I was wrong. If I shoot my neighbor... I'm going to jail. They're going to put me in jail. And I'm going to be sitting in jail and I'm going to be thinking, what's the difference in that and what I said to my wife the other day? See, I'm going to have to suffer way more for that than I am for that. Not belittling that. Not saying that's not bad. All sin's bad. But some sins are worse than other sins. The best thing you can do is stay away from every sin you can imagine. Any sin, anything wrong, stay away from it. Uh, but sin comes, it's in stages like that. And, and murder is way worse than getting mad and losing your temper. Murder is way worse, way, way worse because of the effect on the individual. Let me ask you a question. Any parent in here, if you'd, which would you rather see your kid do? Smoke a cigarette or smoke crack cocaine? You see what I'm saying? The effect it has on the person doing it. Now, immediately somebody say, oh, you're saying it's all right to smoke a cigarette? I didn't say that. They're both bad. I would 1,000 times my kid smoke cigarette than I had smoke crack cocaine. Wouldn't you? 
Wouldn't you? Yes, sir, you would. I mean, which would you rather see them do? Uh, which would you rather see them do? Uh, smoke a cigarette or would you rather see them do? Because the effect that it has on them. Uh, the cigarette harms their body, absolutely. It's got uh, nicotine, has poison in it and, it, and it affects your body. It really, really does. But the, 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 the cocaine, man, that, that messes with your spirit and, and, uh, and does all kinds of crazy things to you. I'm telling you tonight, it, it is some sins are bigger than others because on the effect that has on the individual who's done it. That's why, that's why the Lord said, he that delivered me to you has the greater sin. He has the greater sin. Now what you're getting ready to do is bad, pilot. But that man over there has got a greater sin than you've got. You've got a sin, he's got a greater sin. You better watch out and you better stay away from sin because it'll get you in more trouble. Uh, uh, murder's worse than a speeding ticket um, because the effect it has on you. Number three, some sins are greater than others because of the effect it has on other people. All right, let's get talk a little plainer. Ladies, every one of you probably have caught your husband glancing when a pretty woman walks by. You say, what are you looking at? <laughs> I saw that or something like that. And he might, he might, I'm not putting it past none of them. He might do that. And the Bible said this, the Lord said, if he looks on a woman and lusts after her, that what? He's done what? He's committed adultery, where? In his heart. And I've heard people get up and say, well, bless God, if you're going to think it, you might as well just, no, not exactly. Not exactly. Now you want to smack him if he looked at a woman lusted after her. But if he really, really did go spend the night with her, well, if he's going to lust, he might, he's committed adultery already in his heart. In his heart. And that hurts. And that hurts a woman. And no man ought to do that. And men ought to keep their, their, their thoughts right and their eyes to their self. But you can't tell me that's just as bad as actually going and sleeping with her. That's way worse. Now, as soon as you say that, somebody says, oh, well, it's all right. Look, no, 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 it ain't either. You've committed adultery in your heart if you look and lust. But if you go to it, you committed it with your body, not just in your heart. Am I, am, I, am I plain enough for you to understand my point now? Say amen. Yes, sir. The Bible said this. He that hateth his brother is a murderer. Now, if you hate somebody, you're a murderer, according to that. First John. And you mean tell me that's just as bad? So, well, if I'm, on, I'm a murderer, I might as well just go ahead and kill him. No. No. See my point? My point is, if I hate my neighbor, it's wrong, and I've got murder in my heart, but the, that sin of actually killing him is having a worse effect on him than just me hating him. The effect it has on the other person. If you, if you commit adultery, you're involved in another person. If you think it, it's only on you. It's wicked. It's wrong. It's bad. Don't you dare sit there and say, oh, well, Brother Danny said it's all right as long as you don't do it. I did not say that. It is wrong. It is adultery if you think it. But it hurts the other person worse if you do it. And you too. He that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. That's why the Lord talked about divorce. And he said, if a man, man can't get divorced except for fornication. You know why he didn't say adultery? Because adultery can just be a thought or a look. You can't get divorced for that. Adultery can be just a thought, and fornication normally implies an act. It's an act that you are in. We get into that when we study, study divorce. But I'm telling you tonight, it, uh, uh, the actual act is a thousand times worse. Amen. Lord, if you'd done everything you thought about or wanted to, you'd be in jail right now, wouldn't you? Or already done gone to hell. The effect it has on the other person. Which is worse? Which is worse? 
this. Man, I'd like to get drunk. I'd just like to get drunk. I wish I was drunk. I'd love to get drunk. Now, don't sit around and think like that. That's a sin. Which is worse, thinking like that or going and buying a bottle of liquor and drinking it? Some sins are worse than others. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's a very fundamental Bible truth that you ought to get in your crawl and keep it and do, get, it, do, do it, get it in your heart and do it right. Do it right. Now, I'm going to say this and I'm done. If you, let me ask you something. If I stole a dollar, it's sin, right? If I stole a thousand dollars, you're not going to sit there and say, no different. As far, as far as me being a lawbreaker, it ain't. You're a lawbreaker if you go five miles over the speed limit. But you're a way worse lawbreaker if you go 30 miles over the speed limit. Now you steal a dollar. You steal a dollar, and that's a sin. You're a thief. But if you steal $10,000, you go to prison for that. I don't know if you can go to prison for stealing a dollar. I get. I don't know. That'd be... You, your lawyer costs you a lot more than that, uh, but but if, if you and it's wrong, still a dollar. See, as soon as you say that, somebody says, "Oh, well, I just steal a little bit here and there." And my boss man, he'll never know the difference. <laughs> and, and that ain't right. That ain't right. It's wrong to steal a penny. It's wrong to take a penny that's not yours. I'm not. Tooting my horn like I'm some big special saint or nothing. But man, I'm scared to say about stealing something from somebody. If, I, if I've got, I've had money, it's happened there once in a while, money laying on my dresser, and I'll have it there, and I'll, and I'll come back, you know, I'll go off somewhere like I did this week and come back, and I'll think, what did I lay that money there for? Sometimes it's somebody says, here, put this in the church. And then sometimes I just have change or something and lay it there. And if it comes to the point where I thought, is that belong to the church? Or is that my money? If there's a doubt, it goes with my tithes and goes in the church. I'd rather err. If I'm going to make a mistake, I'd rather make it with me on the losing end and not the Lord in the church, right? Amen. Amen. I'm serious. I mean that. And I do that and I practice that. If there's any doubt, I want me to come out losing and not God. I'd hate to say, well, I believe that's mine. You know, you're like the little fellow said, he's going down the road and he, uh, he had uh, 10 dimes. And his daddy told him, he said, now one of them dimes is the Lord, son. And he's going down through there, you know, and he's counting them like that. And he dropped one of them and it run down in the drain. He said, oh, I lost the Lord's dime. <laughs> yeah, I bet you did. It's always the Lord you lose, ain't it? It's always the Lord. You cheapskates, you got nine left. Why don't you just say, I lost one of mine. Give God his and keep eight. Amen. Be honest. It's wrong to steal a dime. It's wrong to steal a dime. Say it again, preacher. It's wrong to steal. My mom said, don't take a bobby pin that ain't yours. And every time I see a bobby pin, I can hear her saying that. I see one laying around somewhere. I can hear my mom saying that. She beat that in our head. And ladies and gentlemen, it's wrong to steal a dime. But it's way more wrong to steal a hundred dollars. You don't believe it? You're headed for court, and your judge will show you it is. I will say this, and I'm through. The worst sin a person can commit. What is the worst sin a person can commit? I is to pass over the goodness and love of God and the grace of God and walk right past the Lord Jesus dying on the cross and say thanks but no thanks. I'll live my life the way I want to live. I don't want to receive God's son. I'm good enough. I don't need that. That's the worst sin. Listen, you don't go to hell because you cuss. You don't go to hell because you don't do, because you stole something. You don't go to hell because you told a lie. You go to hell because you refused God's son that paid the price for your sins. Amen. The worst sin a man can commit is to say, Lord, Jesus died on the cross for me. Thanks, but no thanks, Lord. I'll live my own life. I believe I'll be all right by myself. I, that is the worst sin you can commit. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes on him should not perish but have everlasting life. And you just say, 
Never, never mind. He, he bled. They beat nails through his hands. They put a crown of thorns on his head. And you're going to say, I don't need you. I, that'll, that's what will put you in hell. Amen. The worst sin you can commit is reject God's son. So what I want you to get tonight is learn that all sin's bad. There is no little sin, but there's some sins way, way worse than others. I believe the Bible teaches moral, moral decay. When you get down into, I mean, you get, of course, adultery. And then you get into, uh, 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 what do we call it, uh, unnatural uh, homosexuality. And then you bestiality, and pedo- finally pedophilia of people raping children. Listen, it goes down. That's the bottom of the barrel right there, man. Messing with kids, and that's what this country's eat up with tonight. That's the bottom of the barrel. You can't tell me that that's worse than sitting in your house one day and saying a cuss word. It's not the same. It's not the same. It's all bad, but nobody ought to cuss. But some sins way worse than others. Don't you ever, and I'm closing with this, don't you ever justify your sin by saying, well, so-and-so else does this. Somebody else done that. Ain't no different than that. Don't do that. That's a big mistake. All right, let's stand by our heads for prayer. Amen. Just a little Bible lesson tonight, like a little Sunday school lesson. On some sins are worse than others. I don't know what your sin might be tonight. But while our heads are bowed and eyes are closed, she's going to play something soft just for a second. We're not going to have an invitation per se. If you want to come pray, that's, that's perfectly fine. But Miss Desi's going to play something softly tonight. And I wonder if you might just right there where you stand, heads bowed and eyes closed, say, Lord, help me. To stay. Listen, you want to live a happy life? You want to live a blessed life? Get the sin out of you. If you're looking at something you shouldn't look at, quit it. If you're flirting at work, quit it. Stay away from that person you've been flirting with. You've been lusting at somebody and justifying it because you ain't doing nothing? You're full of the devil. You need to ask the Lord to forgive you and quit it tonight. Tonight. Been looking at something on your phone and then justifying it by saying, well, I ain't really doing nothing. Yeah, you'll find out when the Lord gets through with you. You'll find out. You let God speak to your heart tonight. Settle it right now. Say, Lord, forgive me. Help me to turn my back on that wicked sin. You've been gossiping? Been gossiping about somebody? And you know good and well you say stuff you shouldn't say about them? Lord, forgive me. Lord, forgive me. Lord, forgive me. Amen. Forgive me. Been stealing. Stealing your tithes from God. You've been stealing from your boss. Lord, forgive me. Lord, forgive me. Let me do right. Let me do right. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, I pray right now in Jesus' name that you'd help every one of us in here tonight to hate sin, any sin, all sin, every sin. God, I pray in Jesus' name, Holy Spirit, that you would help us to live right, serve you. Lord, help us to stay away from sin, any kind of sin. Help us not to do nothing, say nothing, go nowhere, be around nobody, anything that's wicked or wrong. Don't, Lord, don't let nobody in here listen to no wicked music, watch no dirty movies, nothing like that. Lord, don't let us do it. Lord, help us not say, help us say no, Lord. Stay away from that trash. Help us, God, right now we pray. Clean our lives up. Help us to hate sin. In Jesus' name we pray. And for his sake. Amen. Amen. Amen.